powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us this Wednesday night. I'm Janelle Slade. And I'm Jay Cohn. The Montana Attorney General moves to change not only state law, but U.S. law, at least when it comes to using DNA evidence in past sexual assault cases. I think this is a case where the law really has to catch up with the science, and the science here is forensic science. Attorney General Tim Fox now asking the U.S. Supreme Court to allow the prosecution of a suspect linked by DNA evidence to the rape of an eight-year-old Billings girl more than three decades ago. Now the case in question dates back to 1987 when a man entered a Billings home and sexually assaulted the eight-year-old. But it wasn't until four years ago that DNA taken from the scene of that rape was linked to White Sulphur Springs resident Ronald Tipton. Part of that long delay was because Tipton's DNA was not entered into the national system until 2014 when he was involved in a drug crime in Marr County. Rape charges were then filed against Tipton, but this past July, the Montana Supreme Court ruled Tipton could not be tried because the statute of limitations had expired. Fox now wants the nation's highest court to get involved. Uh, this case is not only important for Linda Tokarski Glantz, who has gone public with her story as that eight-year-old girl who was so viciously assaulted many years ago, but it's important for all survivors of uh, sexual assault like this who, with new DNA evidence, could see uh, justice not only brought to the perpetrators but closure for the survivors. This 1987 rape is the same crime that Billings resident Jimmy Ray Bromgard was convicted of and spent 15 years in prison for. That is until DNA evidence exonerated him. Bromgard's case attracted national attention when the Montana Innocence Project joined in, eventually clearing him of the crime in 2002 and leading to a $3.5 million settlement from the state. Keep in mind the Supreme Court accepts only 60 to 65 cases per term. So it's somewhat of a long shot that this case will be accepted by the court. But Attorney General Fox believes that all 50 state attorneys general could eventually file friends of the court briefs with Montana. That, he says, would increase the likelihood the court will agree to hear this case. Fox says he expects to know by the end of this year. And if successful, he hopes to personally argue the case before the high court. Well, the FBI has finished its investigation and the report is on its way to Capitol Hill as senators consider Judge Brett Kavanaugh's Supreme Court nomination. Nicole Killian has more for us tonight from Capitol Hill. The FBI has completed its supplemental background investigation into sexual misconduct accusations against Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. And now senators will have the evidence collected by this additional background investigation for their consideration. Earlier, White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders defended President Trump after he mocked Kavanaugh's accuser, Dr. Christine Blasey Ford, at a Mississippi rally. How did you get home? I don't remember. How'd you get there? I don't remember. Where is the place? I don't remember. He was stating facts that were given during Dr. Ford's testimony. The president's speech brought on criticism from lawmakers, including key Republican undecided voters, Jeff Flake and Susan Collins. The president's comments were just plain wrong. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has said only senators will see the FBI's report, but some Democrats want the American people to see it. The findings of the FBI investigation upon completion should be released publicly with any personal information redacted. Senators familiar with the process tell CBS News Republicans and Democrats will take turns being briefed on the findings Thursday morning. Nicole Killian, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Senate sources also tell CBS News the final vote, the full final vote on Judge Brett Kavanaugh's nomination will likely take place on Saturday. Well, topping the Montana ballot this election year is the race for the U.S. Senate, where Democrat incumbent John Tester is running for a third term. MTN's Mike Dennison has been profiling the candidates this week in this big dollar marquee race. And tonight, he takes a closer look at Republican challenger Matt Rosendale. The state auditor and insurance commissioner Matt Rosendale moved from Maryland to Montana 16 years ago, buying a ranch north of Glendive in far eastern Montana. It already has a substantial political resume in the state. He served six years in the legislature. He ran for the U.S. House in 2014 and won election as state auditor two years ago. Rosendale's professional background is real estate development. Most recently, he put together a housing subdivision just north of Great Falls. 
Rosendale says he got involved in politics at the urging of friends and neighbors who wanted a conservative voice representing them. Folks asked me to go in and run for office to reduce regulations that they found to be burdensome on them and their businesses. They asked me to reduce spending. They asked me to protect their property rights. They've asked me to protect their gun rights. That's what I've done. He won a four-way primary in June to become the Republican nominee to challenge Tester. Since then, he's had President Trump firmly in his corner, with visits to the state twice to campaign for Rosendale and go after Tester. It's time to retire liberal Democrat John Tester. <laughs> Rosendale has returned the favor, saying he's all in for helping Trump carry out his agenda. I think that the, uh, the entire agenda that the president has put forward is all very important. Um, it's basically to expand our economy, it's to reduce regulations and the burdens on our businesses and our families, and it's also to make sure we preserve our national security. Rosendale says Tester is just trying to slow the Trump train, noting his opposition to the 2017 Republican tax cut bill and Trump's Supreme Court nominees, among other things. There's nothing wrong with being a counterbalance, and I, I really enjoy dialogue myself. But there is a difference between being a person who's going to be a counterbalance and someone who's just being an obstructionist. Rosendale will be easily outspent by Tester in the campaign, but so far this year, he's had more than $11 million in help from outside groups. Most recent polls show Tester with a slight lead, or rate this contest a toss-up. It will be watched closely on a national level. But there's also a third candidate, Libertarian Rick Breckenridge, who will profile tomorrow. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Turning to the weather scene, Chief Forecaster Bob McGuire here to tell us more about the colorful side of you know, fall, we've, Bob. we've been showing you the fall foliage pictures, you know, on the weather for the last two or three weeks now. So we thought we'd show you that, well, tonight things are starting to change a little bit. When are the leaves going to start falling? Well, let me show you when these fall foliage leaves are going to start making their peak. Out in western Montana, on the other side of the mountains, that starts today. They're going to start losing their leaves probably the next few days. Uh, right along the mountains, going to be October 10th is when they reach the peak. On the 17th of October, that's right through here in south central Montana, right on up to Haver here in the Billings area, Yellowstone County, could see the 17th when we start losing the leaves and also in the eastern edge of the state looks like we'll reach our peak on October 24th. So you have up until then to go out and take all the beautiful pictures you can because after those dates we're going to start to see the leaves fall. Kind of goes with the season. Let's go back to you. Thanks so much Bob. At least seven law enforcement officers have been shot in South Carolina. One is dead. The conditions of the others has not yet been released. CBS's Kenneth Craig reports. The tragedy unfolded Wednesday evening in Florence, South Carolina. Today we lost a good friend of mine, an officer that I've known for 30 years. Officers were trying to execute a search warrant at a home in the vicinity of Vintage Drive and Hoffmeyer Road. As they approached the house, someone opened fire at them. These officers went there unknowing the firepower this, this the suspect had. And again, they thought it was a random search warrant. Within minutes, three sheriff's deputies and four city police officers had been shot. The county coroner said an officer from the city has been pronounced dead. The conditions of the others were not made public. Fire was being shot all over. The way the suspect was positioned, his view of fire was several hundred yards. So he had an advantage and the officers couldn't get to the ones that's down. About two hours after it began, the Florence County Emergency Management Agency declared the active shooting situation over, saying the suspect had surrendered following a standoff with police. Kenneth Craig, CBS News, New York. And investigators say there were a number of children inside the home at the time. None of them were hurt. Still to come on tonight's 10 o'clock news, an empty space at Rimrock Mall here in Billings could soon be filling empty stomachs. We'll fill you in on the latest plans. Well, as we hike the M in Missoula to check out its homecoming makeover. And later in sports, Billings swimmer Ethan Harder is in Argentina this week to represent Team USA. Scott will bring us up to date on his story. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Green. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.